La 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 la. Oh, you just rolling. They see me rolling. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly broadcast of all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. It's Constant here and here is... Becky! Whoop whoop! We are recording this remotely. There's no one behind the camera. Fancy. Technology. Welcome to the world of tomorrow. So, uh, we've been out for two weeks now, yeah? We had a bank holiday. We had a, a podcast hiatus. Absolutely. And uh, there were quite a few uh, news from Nikon. Not the ones that we would like to hear, but we'll talk about it later. But let's start from the awards first, I yes, think. Yes, I think pop the kettle on, settle down. It's going to be a quite a wild ride today. Two hours? <laughs> Something like that. Let's do that. So first up, we have the uh, Design Awards. Yes, IF Design Awards. IF. What does that stand for? International Forum Design GmbH, that's what it stands for. I'll say for. what if. <laughs> so the Nikon D6, Z62, Z72, MBN11 grip, as well as the Eclipse EI mm -hmm. Educational Microscope, received the IF Design Award for 2021. The, not bad. No, it's not bad at all. The IF Design Award... award meh, the IF Design Award is a globally prestigious design award. <laughs> that's my fool. I, <laughs> Tell okay. me, what award is this? So, it's a globally prestigious award sponsored by IF International Forum Design GmbH since okay. 1953. So, it consists of several disciplines such as product, communication, and packaging. This time, almost 10,000 entries from 52 countries and regions were evaluated by renowned experts. And only Nikon won. <laughs> Nikon also received a Red Dot Award recently. Yeah, we talked about it, uh, I think, a couple of weeks ago. But also, speaking of awards, uh, Nico Z50mm 1.2 S lens won Comprehensive Gold Award at Digital Camera Grand Prix 2021. Wow, wow. So this is a Japanese magazine. Yes, do you remember that the, you won't remember this, but do you remember th that the Gold FA came out as a response to that award, not digital camera, but it was the, the camera Grand Prix Is back in so? the 1980s. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So they didn't make a gold 51.2 to celebrate this. However, the 51.2 is a beautiful lens. We've done a review on it. That should be out shortly. Yeah. Everyone should have one. Everyone should have one in their kit bag. Fantastic. Okay. On another news, uh, Nikon USA announced spring rebates. So it's mm. up to $300 off selected Nikon Z and F lenses, $500 off Nikon D850, and $300 off of D780. Now, this is good for our US friends. We're hoping that Nikon Europe will do a similar thing over here, and potentially Nikon Asia will do their own uh, spring savings. But you've got uh, the F1.8 S prime lenses, those all have $100 on, um, sorry, off mm -hmm. them, okay. except the 35 mil, which gets $150. Oh, that's a bonus. Yeah, the excellent 20 millimeter F1.8 S now comes down to $949 as, as a result of that. That's pretty good. That's uh, what, uh, 800 pounds of uh, our money? <laughs> Something like that. It's, le it's actually less. No, the US dollar is very favorable towards the pound right now. So it's probably about 750, mm -hmm. 725, something like that. Was it in bitcoins? In fact, I will tell you, $1,000 as of last week was 721 pounds. Wow, well, yeah. thanks for this update, Becky. You're welcome. I thought I'm the one who's doing finance. And I know, here you are. but I know this stuff. So Becky specializes in Forex and currency <laughs> exchange. <laughs> Not financial advice. Um, but the, the yes. good thing about this is obviously that our uh, US viewers uh, will have some money to spend and some discounts to have. That's right. But it's also highlights an issues where you can have different branches along, around the world and they don't talk to each other because we in UK and Europe had some discounts in April. Yes. And now we don't have any, and now USA customers have some. That's right, but we haven't had any Z discounts this year yet. So hopefully before the summer, we will see some Z related discounts because we did have an F mount promotion, mm -hmm, didn't mm -hmm. we? Back in um, March, April time. Uh, now, if you over, over there, if you are looking for long telephotos, there is the 70 to 300, which we talked about on Friday's live stream. Mm -hmm. As an F mount lens, that's down to 399 US dollars. That's true. Absolutely. And for us Europeans, it's quite interesting to see the prices without VAT on them. Yes. We used to the prices that include VAT. That's right. And there you think it's $900. Well, it's not because added tax will be added at checkout. That's a good point. Depending on what state you're in, right? Exactly. Because some states don't pay taxes at all. 
why not? And some of them, I think New York is about 8-9% or something like this. There you go. Uh, I mean, the people that are in the US that this is relevant to would already know that. But, we... okay. <laughs> but our American viewers, please do advise in the comments below what tax your state has. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> it's Googleable. Yeah, we're going to do live stream on American taxes at some point, I think. <laughs> Nikon releases AX and AXR confocal microscopes. Now, this is... Very exciting. 8K. 8K images. So high resolution 8K, 8K by 8K images that support biological phenomena research with 25 millimeter field of view are obtainable by intuitive operation. Fantastic. All I can say it's available in late May. And if you want one, you can definitely get in touch with Nikon on that one. Speaking of microscopes and healthcare, Nikon published a conclusion of memorandum of understanding for collaboration with Oxford Nanopore Technologies Limited. Don't you like such titles, Becky? <laughs> I do. I didn't understand the title. But All right. So it's Oxford Nanopore. Nanopore Technologies. Nanopore Technology. It's a UK-based company. <laughs> you see, when I was doing this picture in Photoshop, <laughs> the, the Nikon, I once put Nikon plus this and then the heart because it's a healthcare. Uh, but then my Photoshop skills are not that good. So <laughs> I just true. left the two logos there. The two companies plan to collaborate to bring together Nikon's world-class microscopic imaging solutions mm -hmm. with Oxford Nanopore's sequencing technology for potential deployment in end-to-end -end workflows in research and healthcare settings. Yes, this company is behind a new generation of DNA that I understand, and RNA, this I don't understand, secrecy and technology. Uh, from what I understood, this helped with uh, developing the vaccines for COVID. So that's one of the things that kind of I took out of this press release. Mm. But they talk to each other and hopefully they will make the world better. Yeah, so essentially biological information. It's, it's Nikon have decided to kind of branch further into the medical field, yes, more Nick so than they already were, mm -hmm. um, in order to collaborate with other companies and make a kind of more planet-wide impact, I would say. Exactly. And Nikon is a health company, mm. so it's one of the things that they do, a part of photography. So um, they're developing themselves. As we said, Nikon is a growth company. That's they're growing right. in different directions. Exactly. All right, the interesting news we had this week as well, uh, which I found and it hasn't been published on the website, but it's just a caution that if you see it published by other website, it is not true. So Nikon Service Support website published an article, well, they updated the article, which said Nikon product spare parts suspended. <gasps> the text of the article said that due to COVID, we are suspending all the sales of spare parts to customers. Now, it's been updated on 6th of May, so a couple of days ago. Yeah. And it got me thinking because UK well, was actually out of lockdown, well, partially. Yeah. So a lot of things are actually getting better a little bit. So why to suspend the sale of spare parts now? So yeah. I got in touch with my contact at Nikon. Well, it's my uncle, really. So And I said, what happened? So I got a reply this morning. And basically, he says that after speaking with our spare parts team, they advised me that the reason the website is saying that is because there's still some limited service operations at present. However, the spare parts team are still available to take orders. So Nikon official website saying that they are suspending the sale of spare parts, mm -hmm. but my contact at Nikon says it's all fine and dandy. Essentially, if you have a contact at Nikon, then you can still order spare parts. No, that's not true. I managed to order some spare parts just last week, so I don't think, as far as I know, there was a cautionary notice at the bottom of their the reply mm -hmm. email to say that some parts would take longer to source than others, mm -hmm. but it seemed to be just a generic kind of almost blanket statement. So I actually think that they're still operating as normal. So probably some bug. Yeah, they're in the supply chain, mm -hmm. which we've already experienced, so we know that. Z30 rumors continue. Nikon rumors published another confirmation of the rumored Nikon Z APS-C mirrorless camera, codename N2016. No way. <laughs> this time from registration filings in Taiwan, which was reported by Nikoshita. Yes, so it's a Japanese website. So on the tweets that they published this image, of product registration code name N2016. Like it. So let's have a look at the specs. It says, first line, notebook, Lenovo. <laughs> Do you think it's to do something with Nikon? I don't understand that. It says digital camera, Nikon, N2016. Then you've got notebook, Lenovo, T430, 
1.8 meter adapter. Yeah, it doesn't say MacBook, I can tell you that. No, and then you've got the microphone, which is an ME1. Which... So we assume that it's going to have 3.5 jack or whatever that jack is for yeah, the microphone. Okay. It is 3.5. Yep. Uh, then we've got the 16 to 50 lens in there, which already exists. So we assume that's going to be a kit bundled mm -hmm. with the camera. And it looks like it's got a hot shoe because it's got Speedlight Nikon SB5000. Okay, the question I have on this one specifically, will it trigger SB5000 remotely? You think that's why they put that one in there? Uh, could be, but at the same time, if it's Z30 and it's gonna be the cheapest Nikon camera, mm -hmm. then I don't think it will happen. No, well, we'll see. I don't know if it will happen because the Z50 doesn't have that capability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I doubt it. I think it's more just that the hot shoe is obviously, there, there will be a hot shoe on it. Mm -hmm. um, then we've got LED monitor, which looks like it's supplied by Dell. Mm -hmm. It has a serial number that I don't understand. How much is it, 27 or 32 inches? What do you think? Uh, it doesn't say inches. Sorry, <laughs> it's, like, it's like 22 well, centimeters. <laughs> well, that was more some manufacturer, that's yeah, why I'm asking you. I know. Um, so then we have a potential asterisked ENL25 with an MH32 battery okay, charger. Okay, so that is the charger and the battery that is, that is used by Z50 camera, effectively. Correct. So that helps us to understand that potentially the kind of the shape and the size of the camera is going to be similar. Mm-hmm. And then we also have a USB cable UCE24, which is 60 centimeters long, which mm -hmm. the spec is in there, and an HDMI cable, which means that the camera should also have an HDMI port. That's pretty good for entry-level camera, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, the D -A DIY photography website published a mock-up of Z30, um, which we will share with you. There you go. It basically looks like a Z50 with the viewfinder shaved off. I'm not keen with of that about that, yeah. to be honest. I mean, with some of the things that we're getting about this camera is because it needs to be entry level and potentially be under 400 pounds or 500 dollars, uh, it's highly likely that it won't have a built-in LCD screen. So it's just gonna be an LCD at the back. You mean it won't have an EVF? Exactly. Because you said LCD, but you meant EVF. I meant EVF. <laughs> yes, okay, you good. You see, you can read my mind. I can. What I'm hoping is that maybe they'll do a little bit like the P7000 design, where they have a small EVF just off to the side, because mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be on top so of it. So rangefinder style. Rangefinder style, original Coolpix Pro series, mm -hmm. they're kind of bridge cameras um, style, where the EVF is off to the side, it's slightly smaller and lower resolution, mm -hmm. but is there for when you're shooting in bright sunlight, which was really the benefit of those P7000 cameras. I agree, that would be nice. It would be nice to have an option of uh, viewfinder for EVF for yeah. some people, and then for everyone else, they can use old-fashioned LCD. Yeah. I yeah. call it old-fashioned, but people who would buy them, for them it would be old-fashioned. It's very true. Now, more on DX cameras. Uh, Nikon Rumors published an article called Nikon DX cameras and lenses are slowly disappearing. Mm -hmm. Well, disappearing is a, <laughs> is a, disappearing is a present tense word. <laughs> They're pretty much 30 D3500 are uh, known exist. So they're in the red list and they're slowly disappearing. Yes. So they're an endangered species. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I will start a charity <laughs> yeah. where you can support them. And hopefully we can get a couple of D3500s together and we can make them to multiply. That's right. Uh, we also need some D5600s for that just to save the species a little bit. Absolutely. Now, they have been out of stock, unfortunately, for months in the UK. We've had a trickle of them through. We've been able to handle a few back orders. But quite honestly, it has been quite a, a dire situation in terms of the stock availability of those. Yes, it's a, it's a very interesting thing because we've seen some uh, Japanese website, if you go to Nikon Japanese website, mm. have a look at the listing of their current cameras. Mm -hmm. If you open it up, all we have there is D8, D6, D850, D810A, hello. Th what? That yep. was discontinued. Then. That's the thing. <laughs> D780, and then we have D500, D7500 only. <gasps> They've so, removed it. Exactly, but then where is D750, which is still out in UK, mm. and obviously 5600 and 3500. Yeah, and why is the D810A there? Unless they are still making it for the Japanese market, but that doesn't make sense. It's an interesting one, and that's why I'm not 100% sure on this particular rumor, because mm. I think it could be just a re some sort of regional restriction or something. Potentially. I mean, we know, obviously, factories were closed for a long period of time. Yep. We've had issues with certain 
parts and components on the assembly line. Mm -hmm. Semiconductors. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's affected other products, not just Nikon's products, yeah. but other brands. I've seen it with phones and, and a few others that's as well. That's true. Um, but there's also the, you know, the fact that that previous rumor we just talked about, the Z30 release. Yes. And the, let's say, the ultimate goal of pushing people towards mirrorless. So maybe it's a bit of everything. What do you exactly. think? Exactly. We also saw increase on uh, price increase in UK on 3,500, 600 cameras. We did. And we still haven't received them anyway. <laughs> so I personally think that, yes, Nikon is gearing up to release of Z30 and effectively will push people to just have a camera at entry level mm. for people who are buying their first system. Just go with mirrorless. Yeah. If you are in Japan, Nikon announced a Z Creators Photo Contest with a grand prize of Nikon Z58 F0.95 knocked lens. Ooh, nice. That's a nice one. So you can apply from, well, it started on 27th of April and you can submit your application up to 29th of July. You have to live in Japan in order to be able to register for this and you can take a picture with any Z camera or lens you want and the winner will get the grand prize. Very nice. The genre doesn't matter either in any age, anyone who lives in Japan. Uh, and if you have an Instagram account. Yes, in Japan. Hang on. That was really annoying. Um, that's it, really. That's the limitations. That do I need to do that bit again? So... Uh, the genre doesn't matter. You can be of any age as long as you live in Japan and have an Instagram account. Those are the requirements to apply. Yeah, it's time to move to Tokyo. Yeah. Atomos announced several products releases and updates last week. So first of all, we saw an Atomos Ninja 5 Plus release, which supports 8K. So mm -hmm. for upcoming Z9, I would say. <laughs> yeah. They also introduced Atomos Ninja Stream, a social distance production tool. What this does, basically, it connects to your regular Atomos device, mm -hmm. but you can be, let's say, in another room or in another country. That's it can right. send the signal via internet. That's very, very handy, particularly for production teams where they aren't able to travel or be close to one another or they have to be in different locations. It's more than just a socially distanced <laughs> tool, in fact. Absolutely. It's quite useful, isn't it? Mm. And then the original Ninja 5 that was released in, back in 2018 also received a firmware update where it, they enabled H.265 HEVC codec. Excellent. Fantastic. <laughs> And now for third-party lens releases. First up, we have Seven Artisans, who released a 50mm f1.05 mm -hmm. full-frame mirrorless lens for the Nikon Z. It, that's an interesting one. So mm -hmm. uh, let's go through the specs. So it's f1.05 aperture. It's manual focus, 606 grams, costs $486, and diaphragm with 13 blades. Very nice. We will include a link so that you can see sample images and product images in the description box and the podcast notes for you. Nikon Rumors also published the 7 Artisan upcoming lens, which is 10mm f2.8 fisheye. Mm. Uh, no specs as of yet, apart of it being 10mm fisheye and f2.8. Yeah. And then we also had Venus Optics releasing their 33mm f0.95 APO APS-C lens for Nikon Z mount. So just to, to let you know, it's a DX lens. Yeah, so it'd be a 50 mil almost equivalent, not quite, but an F0.95. Exactly. Which is pretty cool. Exactly. And then it's not very expensive again. It's $499. Wow, for a 0.95 lens, that's very interesting. And it's also under 600 grams. Exactly. Then the company TT Artisan, not to be mistaken with 7 Artisan, mm -hmm. released 50mm f1.2 APS-C lens. And it's also available for Z-mount as well. So again, it's a DX lens, manual focus, only $130. That is a bargain. And it only weighs 336 grams. Not bad. Mm -hmm. And they also released a 21mm f1.5 lens. Uh, now that is a full frame lens designed for obviously the full frame Z6, Z7 series cameras. Also manual focus. We don't have any other specs apart from that. No, it's £229 available on Amazon. But the question I had for you, Becky, is mm -hmm. with all those releases, so uh, third party lenses, which you said the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. The question I had for you, do you think those lenses will win any awards in terms of optical quality? I mean, I don't, to be honest, but I think that they are providing some focal lengths and apertures that Nikon don't have planned for the mm -hmm. range. So it's almost like they complement the existing lens range anyway. And if you do want to spend less money, for example, on a 35mm, mm -hmm. for example, with a Z50, 
the only 35 mil available is the full frame 1.8. That's true. So having an APS-C designed one to get you to your 50 mil focal length at, you know, under $200, it's very nice indeed. Absolutely. And small and light as well, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. It's manual focus, but with focus peaking and so many other things, it doesn't really matter. Absolutely. The only thing I do find interesting them that they are manual focus only, mm. but there is one lens that is also focused, and it's a Viltrox 85mm f1.8. Oh, yeah. And that's the one that Richie compared with H5 1.8 S lens. So now this lens received the firmware update. Mm -hmm. You can update the lenses nowadays. Uh, and it should improve overall compatibility with Z cameras. Excellent. Right, now we have Easy Cover released a rubber camera case for the Nikon Z5, Z6 Mark II and Z7 Mark II. It is very yellow. Exciting. Nikon yellow. Uh, what, is, what, what do you use one of those for? That's a good question. <laughs> if that's your thing, <laughs> it's available <laughs> in the link below. The, the idea is that it stops dust and dirt from getting into the small nooks and crannies of your camera body. Obviously, there are openings for all of the different screens, ports, buttons, etc. But um, but it provides an extra level of cover and makes sure that uh, you can see your camera in the dark. Better be safe than sorry. <laughs> In UK retailer news, we did report on Jessup's going into administration a few weeks ago, but we decided to report some positive news yeah, as well. Yeah, that's just some good news, isn't it? Mm -hmm. London Camera Exchange is now employee-owned. Yeah, that means that the specialist photographic retail chain, chain will now be owned by the 140-strong workforce via Ownership Trust. Further good news is that the company has seen a 32% increase in revenue over the last 10 years. So that's good. That's not bad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then also Warehouse Express will open its 10th store in Leeds. Congratulations. Many congratulations. All right. S speaking of UK, the Real Photography Show is back. So, <laughs> is that what they're going to call it now? The Real Photography Show? The Real Photography Show. So they had Virtual Photography Show mm -hmm. in March. Yeah. So almost two months ago now. And they said that the virtual events will return um, I guess they didn't say how often, but they said it was very successful. Over 12,000 visitors watched the broadcasts. Mm. But they are planning to have a physical show back in NEC Centre in Birmingham um, on 18th um, of September. Very nice. I was supposed to go to that one last year. Well, hopefully you'll make it this time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Nikon is expected to be exhibiting there. Excellent. We look forward to it. And now to the main news, Becky. Super much numbers. Sipa. Sipa. <laughs> you got to do your if you need your Sipa numbers. <laughs> Sipa is your friend. Okay. It's all good news. Good. This <laughs> this penguin trajectory. <laughs> okay, so we're back to the penguins. Back to the penguins. Looks like a humpbacked whale. I just want to kind of you. I want you to imagine. Imagine March last year. I can, I'd, I'd rather yeah. not, but sure. Okay, <laughs> so it's all doom and gloom. Yes. Yes. And a year later, it's, it's completely different. It's better. It's all in green. Ah, I don't understand what the penguins mean, so I'm just going to wait for you to clarify. Well, I assume it's a penguin jumping off the cliff. I see. So, Isn't and that what lemmings do? <laughs> what? <laughs> you see, I was trying to find wink, wink. a photograph of penguin me there. Right. But the search continues. Okay. I haven't found the right one. So hopefully for the April figures, <laughs> I'll have a perfect photograph for this. The top line in that schematic that you have there mm -hmm. represents 2019. The bottom one, the black one, 2020. And the orange one is 2021. Okay. So numbers have improved over last month across the board. Year to date, mirrorless units are up 30%. And merely shipped value is up and now standing 82% over previous year. Again, shipped value is actually a representation in money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, even DSLR units are up, to, uh, you know, up this year, which is strange because technically we do see reduction in sale of DSLRs and increase of uh, merely shares. But let's start from the beginning. So DSLR shipments were 615K year to date. So it's plus 6%. The SLR shipped value is down 7%, so it's 23.8 billion yen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mirrorless has increased, so they ship 771k, so it's 30% up a year to date. And mirrorless shipped value is 74.9 billion, or 82% 
year to date. 82%. Yeah, that's a big jump. It's a colossal increase. Again, the trend we see is reduction in DX lenses, basically, mm. or lenses that are uh, designed for sensors smaller than full frame. We saw uh, 24% uh, year-to-date reduction, or 1.3 million units. And then uh, shipped value also decreased by 5%. Now, full frame lenses and full frame plus lenses has increased by 18% or 989 k and 49.6 billion in share or 25% up. Excellent. Really good. Now, mirrorless unit share to DSLR has increased to 55.6%. Mirrorless shipped value over DSLR has increased by 75.9%. So that mirrorless shipped value share over DSLR is how many more mirrorless over DSLRs? Exactly, so shipped 70, in that period of time. So it was 61%, now it's 75.9%. Exactly. Okay, I understand. So that's pretty good. So again, the trend continues. So now we're coming out of the COVID, so the sales start to increase, but we also see that mirrorless, especially full-frame mirrorless, mm -hmm. is definitely increasing its value and share on the market. Excellent. The next one up is the point of discussion. Okay. This is based on two articles that were published last week. First one is from Nikon Rumors okay. that said, is Nikon sleeping? <laughs> and that's referred to Nikon not releasing anything in the last two or three months. Sure, particularly now that we've had releases from uh, Sony, Fuji, and Canon. <laughs> exactly. The article didn't say really anything new. No. But I have a feeling that it's an article based on us Nikon users wanting Nikon to do something and announce new products. Mm -hmm. Now, Tom Hogan, and we continue our Tom Hogan watch um, this year <laughs> <Tom Hogan. laughs> for President 2021, <laughs> he, in a good YouTube fashion, mm -hmm. released a diss track saying Nikon is not sleeping. And they're actually doing something. Interesting. Okay, good. So now, a part of it's obviously creating drama yes. and... People say, no, Nikon is going down and is going out of business, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, We've heard all this before. for like 30 exactly. years. <laughs> so let's have a sensible conversation. Yes? <laughs> is that possible with us? <laughs> um, we'll try. We'll try. So we stop have... the video. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a few things that one needs to take into account. Obviously, okay. we've had a worldwide pandemic which has put a lot of things to a little bit of a halt. Yeah, we haven't spoken about COVID, I think, for the <laughs> last three or four months, didn't we? <laughs> and then we've also had, as a result of that, but not just as a result of that, just generally, we've had yeah. supply chain issues. Yes, I mean, the, again, big semiconductor issues that's mm. affecting pretty much everyone, from phones manufacturers to EV manufacturers well, to camera manufacturers even. Yeah, you know. exactly. So those two things, I think, dramatically affected what Nikon were currently supplying and mm -hmm. what they were able to invest their time in producing. Mm -hmm. Because although potentially R&D guys could still work from home, mm -hmm. maybe, um, you can't make a camera in your home office. Exactly. And one <laughs> point that um, Tom raised, yeah. our friend Tom, our mate Tom. Um, he said that because they shifted all the production to Thailand, that a lot of engineers from Japan have to fly to Thailand. And they have to quarantine yeah. each time they fly to Thailand and back from Thailand. Yes. So effectively, if it's, I don't know, I don't know how many weeks it is, but let's say in UK, it's normally two weeks, isn't it? So you have to fly to Thailand and currently for two weeks, mm -hmm. do the work, come back and currently for another two weeks mm -hmm. before you fly back. Yeah. That's also will delay a lot of releases. Absolutely. And I mean, we've also had a few other bits and pieces, like for example, okay, so people want Nikon to release new things, not necessarily because they want to buy them, but because they want to see their favorite company continuing to be competitive and continuing to put stuff out I mean, there. we want Nikon to succeed as well. Exactly. Yeah. And we want to see new products because they excite us, even if they're not for yeah. us specifically. Because we are photographers ourselves. Yes, We absolutely. do take pictures every now and then. Every so often. Mm, once uh, or twice a year. <laughs> if I'm lucky. <laughs> um, however, people do have to understand that it has been tremendously challenging for Nikon but also just generally for photographers yeah. um you know we no longer we didn't have an Olympics last year and that's usually one mm. of the kind of main places where camera brands advertise and push their new products we haven't had any public sporting events any public concerts theater none of that so it kind of comes down to if they're going to release a product they have to have a platform from which to release it as well like a YouTube platform that we have here. 
But speaking of Olympics, <laughs> we reported a couple of weeks ago that Tokyo and prefectures around it are coming out of COVID. Yes. Uh, actually, a couple of days ago, the news came out that Japan extends COVID emergency in Tokyo. Uh, but Premier says that the Olympics are still going ahead. Mm. So by extending the emergency in Tokyo area again... Nikon headquarters is in Tokyo as well. Yes. Exactly. So again, they were thinking to come back to normal, but again, they have to restrict themselves, stay at home. Yeah, exactly. So it does make things very challenging for them. Obviously, depending on which region you're in, which country you're in, some of us are sort of almost back to normal now. In the UK, things are definitely looking that way. But that's not the case for so many other countries. So many other countries that are still kind of locked down in one yeah sense or another, it makes it very difficult to kind of get the show on the road. Exactly. And I think, I feel like we are repeating ourselves, isn't it? Because we have to talk about it quite often, but <laughs> with all the internet and drama. One day people will get the message. Exactly. Well, here are a couple of reassuring quotes from Tom. He says, I still expect at least four and possibly more Z-System announcements in May, June timeframe. So that's soon. Mm -hmm. um, however, that's going to pose another challenge, and we talked about changes right now. Yeah. My personal highlight of this article, it's just poetic writing of Tom Hogan and he says Nikon's like a salmon swimming upstream against the current right now yeah so what's going to happen is at some point they're going to leap exactly <laughs> that's what they do right exactly that's why I buy every single book by Tom Hogan <laughs> anyway you should buy his books and that's unpaid for advertising we're not sponsored still it's a tragedy no. uh, however if you would like to read those articles, both sides of the story, then go ahead and have a look at the description box or the podcast notes and have a little read of those when you've got a moment. Tom makes some very valid opinions uh, and valid points. Also, give us a thumbs up because we love it when you give us a thumbs up and uh, it makes us happy. <laughs> yes, we like to engage with you. Yeah, and it also puts our podcasts and our videos in front of more people who may find it interesting. You'd be amazed at the most random People that find us because you've liked or commented. Or exactly, some Canon or Sony shooters. Yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. Absolutely, we are all inclusive. <laughs> Welcome to review section. Z72 review by David Crew at Petapixel. Should you buy it? He says. Mm. The answer is yes. The Nikon Z2 is truly one of the best full frame mirrorless cameras currently on the market. I firmly believe it is an excellent choice for a studio photographer who does nothing but portraits to an event shooter who spends most of their time in fast paced, low lit environments and everyone in between. Even if you already own a Z6 or Z7, the Z7 Mark II is worth considering as a replacement or additional system for your kit because of the upgrades it offers. Fantastic. Well, thank you, David. I think that's great. Do read the full review. We will include the links to all of our review section in the description. The next one up is Nikon Z85 1.8 S lens has been tested by DxO Mark. Yes. What they say, with the move to mirrorless, Nikon has mostly concentrated on f4 zooms and f1.8 primes, at least initially anyway. This is in contrast to Canon's approach with high speed lenses designed to attract the attention of professional users. Be that as it may, from our test of Nikon 85 1.8 lens is certainly a well-corrected lens and excellent sharpness at all apertures. Although the price might look a little prestigious at for 1.8 lens, it ranks alongside the best from Zeiss, Canon and Sony, and at one of the finest fixed focal length primes available at any price. Hmm. They give it a score of 49. Now, it's not out of 100 or anything like this. Say. They don't have really kind of the top ceiling, but... If you look at their price chart for all H5 lenses, this lens is number two. Mm. Now, that among all cameras, mounts, etc., etc. So the first one is Sigma H5 L1.4 Arc Lens. And that's a, and it's an F mount lens. F mount lens. Yeah, so they're comparing basically all 85s across all platforms. Exactly. So the, the second one is 1.8S, which is a really good place to be at. Mm hmm. And then on the third place is Carl Zeiss. Now, a lot of people think that Carl Zeiss is where it's at, and it's on the third place. Interesting. Here we go. And it's manual focus. Yes, there is that as well. And it's probably 5,000 pounds. <laughs> at least. Yeah. Among all lenses designed for Nikon mount, and we include Z, Nikon Sigma. 1, and F, and everything, yeah. Uh, again, um, 1.8S lens is on second place, um, and the first one is Sigma Art. I am puzzled. I, I want to have a look at this art lens. I heard it's extremely heavy. Yes. 
but I guess the image quality is there. It is colossal. I'd be interested to see if you review it against your 1.4G, which has a top score of 44. So it's not that far off for yeah. the, the 1.8S. But I love my 85 1.4G and I wouldn't trade it for Sigma. There you go. All right. Constantine has spoken. All right, next up we have, how good is the 14 to 24 f2.8 SZ lens for astrophotography? Nikon Z7 Astro modded. If you'd like to know more, have a look at the YouTube video in the link description below. Yeah, that's by Stephen Morris. That's right. Right, for your read, watch and listen segment this afternoon. We've added listen as well. Yes, so there won't be any listen this week. Oh. But well, that's well it doesn't matter. Exactly. <laughs> Lots of technical articles this week. Yeah. Uh, one is called Caring for Nikon Z Lenses, the basic by Nikon Digitutor. Now, we were thinking to do a live stream on looking after your equipment. So if you do want us to do that, do definitely uh, leave your uh, comment below and we'll take it. We will put something together. Um, they also published a Nikon webcam utility setup video also by Digitutor. This is on YouTube, so you can go ahead and have a look at that. Yeah, or have a look at my video as well. You can do that. But did you do the webcam utility setup? Yes, you did, of course. Sorry. Yes, I did. Shut up, Becky. Right. Uh, one thing I actually forgot, which I've, we, we recorded, but I didn't go into the video eventually, that you have to set your camera to not to go to sleep. Uh, of course. So so that's where this video is slightly better. But, you know, if I won't criticize myself, no one will. <laughs> I've, I've had to troubleshoot a few people with that, actually. Because so. I don't read comments, you see, so I just don't read them. <laughs> it's best. Just, like, it's definitely best up. Next up, we have why are modern 50mm lenses so damned complicated? I wouldn't have been allowed to say that about 100 years ago. Do you know that? It would have been really not okay for me to say that. But you didn't leave 100 years ago. No. <laughs> and you see, I'm Russian. I don't know better. <laughs> so by R. Sikala? Yes, this chap actually works for uh, lensrentals.com and it's an American website where you can rent the lenses out mm -hmm. and they publish lots of technical articles. So one of them was, remember the fly inside the lens? Yes. So he did write the article for DP Review. It's very interesting. Like he just says, look, Yes, we used to 50 millimeters being 100 pounds or so. Mm. Yes, they're more expensive now, but there are a lot more going on there. Yeah. We also have the Z System Myth Busting article by Tom Hogan, which is well worth a watch. Uh, sorry, a read, because he doesn't do watching. We do that no, again. but he should, I think. He should. We should. <laughs> <laughs> or he can send us articles and we will record the videos for them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but if you had someone says, ooh, you can say this, eh, then read his article and, and you'll have an answer for this. <laughs> I can just imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Lens Culture Portrait Award winners. Some beautiful photographs in there. Do have a look. Yes. We also have an article by The Guardian. The Guardian, the British Guardian. Mm -hmm. So this is called In the Green Room, the 2021 Nikon Surf Photography Awards. So I didn't even know that Nikon had a surf photography no, I mean, award. Yeah. You see, I'm more of a surf and turf person myself, <laughs> but uh, so, you know. This year's Nikon's Surf Photo of the Year Award goes to Stu Gibson for his shot Free Fall featuring surfer Tyler Holmer Cross, sorry, Tyler Holmer Cross taking on ship sterns in southeast Tasmania. The winner has been selected by a panel of 13 high profile judges from within the surfing world, including the seven time world surfing champion Stephanie Gilmore. Fantastic. There's some good waves in there and good wipes. <laughs> some good wipes. Good vibes. Good vibes only. Thank you for watching and or listening. You can find links to all the articles that we've talked about in the description box or in the podcast notes. Please also give us a like and subscribe or a follow and a review if you're listening on a podcast platform. Do what you will. Yeah. <laughs> Live free. If Live someone says, and, and if you dislike us, just press the dislike button twice. <laughs> <laughs> click, click. So, Becky, yes. where can we find you on the internet? You can find me at Rebecca underscore Danese on Instagram or at RebeccaDanese.com. And you? ConstantKochkin.co.uk and still on MySpace at Constant Kochkin. Excellent. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you again for another podcast. All the best. Bye. Bye.